So WWDC is officially starting right now. The opening keynote and the State of the Union have already happened and you can watch them online, of course. I would recommend to do that in the developer app. But today we will have a look at Swift Data, a new framework that I have been looking forward to very much over the past few months. And I actually expected this to be released last year's DC, WWDC already, but we're getting it now. Swift Data, it's just a new wrapper around core data, not a complete replacement, just a Swiftified API for core data. But instead of looking at the developer documentation, let's just jump right into Xcode. Of course, you will need to use Xcode 15, which is currently still in beta. You can download that using the tool that I've talked about in the video up there. So if you haven't installed that tool yet, save hours of your life by using it to download Xcode 15 instead of downloading, downloading it from the developer website. But let's get right into it. So how does Swift data work? I have prepared here a very simple uh, startup project and we can actually get rid of the sidebar there just to have the code here. And then of course, I'm also running the new iOS 17 simulator over here. This is basically the app that we will build in the end how it will look. So it will just be a list and we can add locations in there. And then for the locations, we can change the name and we can delete them. So very easy stuff, basically just the CRUD, create, read, update and delete function functionality for Swift data. So how does everything work? We don't have a model definition file anymore. Instead, we can just use a class in Swift. So we will create a class called location. And this class does not have to conform to any protocols. Instead, we will use the new add model Swift macro. So just add add model in front of your class declaration. And then in here, we can define all of the attributes that our class should have. So for example, I wanted to have a UUID and a name, which is a string. Since this is a class and not a struct, we will also have to create our own initializer. And of course, you will have to import Swift data, which is why Xcode is throwing these errors here. So now let's create our custom initializer with the name and then our self.id will just be a UUID and our self.name will just be name. So now we are able to actually use this class and this is all we have to set up to be able to use this with Swift data. Well, not all, there's one more thing we need to do in our app. So at our window group level, basically, we will have to say the model container and we will um, create that for our location itself. And in here, you could also pass an array of different types if your app supports multiple Swift data structures. All right, so with that set up, we can now create our location list, which is just an empty view right now. And in there, we will do two things. So first of all, we will fetch the data from Swift data. And then second of all, we will display it in a list and add a few interaction modes to add, change and delete data. So first of all, everything in Swift data happens with a so-called model context. So this is a model context from the Swift UI environment. You can always grab that from the environment. This is basically like the view context that we had in core data. We need this to insert and remove objects from Swift data. How do we now read stuff? Well, in core data, we had a fetch request. Now we have the add query property wrapper. So let's create a query now. And there are a few different overloads here. So let me use, oops. So let me use the one with everything. Basically, we don't care about the filter. That's just a predicate. Then the sorting is basically after which field it should be sorted. So I want to sort for location dot name and don't mind this little pop up there. The order I want it to be sorted forward. And as an animation, I will just use spring. And this is basically our fetch request from core data. It's just renamed to query now for Swift data. And then we can give this variable a name. And of course, tell Xcode that we're dealing with an array of locations. And now that is everything we need to set up to actually read data. So now let's show that data. Let's create a navigation stack. And in here, let's create a list over our locations with a location in. 
and then let's just display the location dot name. Let's also add this little add button here to the toolbar to create a new location. So let's say toolbar. Let's create a button called add. And in here, how do we create new locations? Well, super easy. Let location equal a location. And this is why we needed that initializer beforehand. So as the name, we will just say location and then just enumerate them. So just add the count of our locations array to it. So the first one will be location zero, second one will be location one and so on. And then we also need to insert this into our model context. So let's say model context dot insert our location. And now we can already run this app and you will see that we have yeah, one item left from my testing. All right, so uh, I'm sorry about that, but you could imagine this list being empty at the beginning, of course. And now if we hit add, then a new location will be added to the list and it will be animated with the spring animation here. Let's also implement update and delete next. So for that, let's add some swipe actions. And the first one will be delete. I will make this a destructive button. And in here we can just say model context dot delete our location. And if we have a look at that, let's run the app again and let's just delete Los Angeles one. And there we go, it is gone. And then let's also create a second button to update our item. And in here we can just say location dot name equals something else and we don't even need to save these changes anyway so uh, let's choose location three here hit update it's not called something else all right but is that persisted let's run the app again and you will see it is actually persisted no more need for view context dot save and that's already everything you need to know define your models in code using the add model swift macro create your own initializer use the model context environment value, use the query property wrapper to read your items from Swift data, use your model context to delete and insert new items and just change their attributes to update them. It's super easy. Have fun and see you in the next video.